covenant with, with the people of Israel, with Moses on Mount Sinai, and he gave the commandments on tablets of stone. Now, whenever, listen carefully, whenever a commandment is given from outside, is enforced on you, man rebels and cannot keep it. He rebels against it. And God knew this. That's why when you go through the history of Israel, all through the Old Testament, they're breaking the covenant, breaking, 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 breaking. And God gave them the co that covenant to show them that they are sinners. Now, there's all scripture. There's no time for me to go into all this. The reason God gave the covenant, the old covenant, the Ten Commandments to the children of Israel was to show them that they are sinners. They need a savior. They cannot keep the commandments. Now Jesus comes, listen carefully. Now Jesus comes and he introduces the new covenant, right? Remember at the Eucharist, on, 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 at the Last Supper, Jesus took bread, he took wine, he took, the, took wine and he says, this is the blood of the new covenant which will be shed for the forgiveness of sins, he said. And what is this new covenant? I'm sure hardly any of you will know what the new covenant is. Anyone knows what the new covenant is? If you put your hand up, I'll call you up here. Pardon? Okay, okay, we won't waste time. Time is important. Listen carefully to this. Yes, what do you say? What's the new covenant? That's a commandment. That's a commandment, not the covenant. Okay. Okay. Shh. Quiet, quiet. Okay. Now here is Hebrews. Listen, listen, listen. Time is running out. Listen carefully. So Hebrews chapter 8, 10 to 12. Now the writer of Hebrews, I hope you know that the book of Hebrews is in the New Testament, right? <laughs> that much you know. Praise the Lord. Okay. So the writer of Hebrews is quoting this, this passage from Jeremiah 31. And he says... After those days, says the Lord, God is saying, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. I will, this is the new covenant. I'll write my law upon their minds, upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they will not teach one another, saying, Know the Lord, for all will know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. So what is the new covenant? I'll just go through it quickly. This is all salvation, forgiveness of sins. The new covenant, first and foremost, God says, I'll write the law upon your mind and upon your heart. You see, when from my heart, I'm motivated to go to the, for mass. I'm, when, when, when from my heart, you know, God, the Spirit of God has written the law in my heart, and he says, Fritz, prayer is important, I want to pray. Scripture is reading, I want to read scripture. Then spiritual reading, spiritual reading. Prayer meeting, retreats, all this from my heart, I want to do it. God is writing the commandments on my heart. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. That's why when you, after this retreat, you'll find a taste for prayer. You want to pray. You want to connect with Jesus. Why? Because you've entered. Now the new covenant, you have participated. You've become one in the new covenant at your baptism. At your baptism, this is what happened to you, but we've not been taught to heal. We've not been enlightened. And so all the graces of baptism are lying dormant there. But now as an adult, when you come to Jesus and say, yes, Jesus, I believe in you. I put my faith in you. The new covenant comes alive. Those ten commandments are written on your, on, your, on, on, on your heart. I'll give you a simple example. You know, before I met Jesus, I used to indulge in pornography. Okay? And uh, I remember I, I met this very dear, another Catholic. Two, one blind Catholic meeting another blind Catholic. So we met in port and we had gone to a, to a restaurant, we are having a meal. And then he just shares with me, he says, Fritz, I'm feeling terrible, he says, you know, I'm feeling something is really disturbing me. So I said, what, 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 what's troubling you, I said. Then he says, you know, Fritz, when I come into port, I go to prostitutes. I said, what? You come from such a good family? I said, man, what's wrong with you? You'll contract some disease, your whole life will go. What's wrong with you? 
Stop this, I said. And then I'm telling him, I said, no. I said, no, I'm feeling bad about something. So he said, what are you feeling bad about? I said, no, I look at Playboy, and I, those days it was Playboy. He says, Fritz, what's, there's nothing wrong with it. So uh, he says, what's wrong with you? There's nothing wrong. Everyone looks at it, he says. I said, what? Yeah, every guy looks at pornography. He said, hardly, hardly anyone doesn't look at pornography. I said, are you sure? He said, yeah. Oh, I felt so relieved. So I said, well, okay, it's not so bad then. Looking at Playgirl magazine is not so bad. It seems to be okay. And I continued. But after I met Jesus, there's no word pornography in the Bible. You won't find it there. That's a disease of, of now. Terrible disease it is. After I've come to Jesus, I got on my ship and the first thing Jesus said to me, Fritz, you cannot touch this poison. You look at pornography, you, you will fall into sin, you'll fall into masturbation, you defile your body, and then you will look at women as just objects of lust. You will not respect them, you'll only look at them as objects to be used and to satisfy your, your, your carnal pleasures. Oh, I said, wow. Now I'll tell you this. So I, I joined my ship in Japan, and we were going through the Panama Canal. And at those days, the Panama Canal belonged to America. It was an American zone. And my sailors told me, Sir, the moment the ship enters the canal, the, the, the ship is flooded with pornography. Oh, I said, oh my God. I'm so weak. I'm so vulnerable. I cannot resist this temptation. And I'm feeling terrible in my heart two, three days before my ship came to Panama. And I'm a baby Christian. That's why I'm saying to you, sisters and brothers, listen to me, listen to me. The Holy Spirit is the greatest teacher. You open your life to him, he will teach you. There's hardly anyone who's going to teach you. There are no teachers here. Scarce they are. But God loves you. He has given you his spirit. And he will teach you, provided you focus on him. And so two days before my ship arrived, Panama Canal, I knew this temptation. I said, my Lord, Jesus, it's practically impossible for me to resist pornography. I've been, like, I've been so addicted to it, as it were. And then I had a little crucifix on, 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 in my cabin, on my cabin wall. I knelt down, and I said, Jesus, you said you've died to free me from sin. Lord, I'm so weak, I'm so vulnerable. Save me tomorrow, day after tomorrow, save me. I left to myself, I, it's impossible for me to resist this temptation. Jesus, I put my trust in you, I put my trust in you. I prayed. Two days later, the ship enters the canal. And the ship is flooded with pornography. I don't even look at it. No interest at all. I'm a baby Christian. I don't understand what God is doing in my life. That's the next point I want to speak to you about. And so, the whole day, I was on the ship. The ship is flooded. I never thought of it, never went anywhere near it. And about the end of the evening, just as the ship was, you know, moving into the Atlantic, we come from the Pacific Ocean through the canal and enter the Atlantic Ocean. So as the ship was sailing out, one of the sailors came to me and he said, Sir, here it is. I said, keep it to yourself, I said. I had a tangible experience of the saving power of my Lord and Master Jesus. Thank you, God. Come on, all together. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So I will write my law upon your mind and upon your heart. And I will be your God and you shall be my people. You see the relationship? God is your father. You come into a father-son relationship. Not just father and son relationship, but also father, son, brother, sister. God has got all of us are sons. So beautiful, sisters and brothers, to be a Christian. Oh my, I get excited when I meet a Christian, you know. Because we, we have the one father. And we can share. You're my sister. I'll you know, do anything for you. Come to me. You're my brother. Come to me. You're my brother. I'll, we, have, we have the same father. Same lineage. 
I may not know you at all, but you come to me. And I will, whatever it is, in spite of all my wretchedness, I'll still try my best to love you and help you and do what I can for you. So I will be your God and you shall be my people. So ask yourself now, are you in the new covenant? Do you have a relationship with God? Is God your father? Do you recognize the other Catholics as your brothers and sisters? Then, and you will not teach one another saying, know the Lord, for all will know me from the least to the greatest. You see, in the old covenant, only the prophets, only the priests, and only the kings, they had a relationship. God would enlighten them, and they in turn would teach the people of God. But now in the new covenant, because of Jesus, every one of us can have a living relationship with Jesus. All will know me from the least to the greatest. And why, why, why? Why is God going to do all this? Because, listen carefully to this now. For I will be merciful to their iniquities and I will remember their sins no more. It's only when you forgive yourself, when you put your faith in Jesus as an adult, a living faith in Jesus and believe that because of your faith in Jesus, all your sins have been forgiven, never to be remembered, the new covenant starts. Something divine happens in your soul. You've come alive. That's what, you know, if I, when you meet Protestants, they'll ask you, you don't meet so many of them here, but when you go to America, they'll, ask, they'll come up to you and say, are you born again? They'll be Catholic. They'll say, what? Like, in the, like Nicodemus' answer will be. That's their, their language. Are you born again? That's when the new birth takes place. The grace of baptism has come alive. And the new covenant comes alive. That's why it's so important to forgive yourself. Once again, stand up. And believe now, you're entering into the new covenant. And what is the new covenant? As you put your faith in Jesus and believe. You see, God not only forgives, he says, I will remember your sins no more. Say it after me. I will remember your sins no more. Once again, I will remember your sins no more. Look at the cross and say this after me. And thank God that you're entering into the new covenant. God is writing his law in your mind and heart. You're coming to the living relationship with the Father. And, you, and the knowing of Jesus, the experience of Jesus, beginning. Why? Because you've believed in Jesus and he has forgiven all your sins. Right? Wow, you feel so free. Can you imagine, uh, you know how young I am? Okay, okay, shh, I'm only 75. Okay. Girls, you want to look pretty? You don't want to get old, no wrinkles? Young men, you want to look young? What's the answer? Jesus. Come on, once again. What's the answer? Jesus. Okay, shh. See? Okay, now. So I've got 75 years of junk on my head. All gone. At this moment, once again, I'm going to forgive myself. That's why, listen, listen, listen to me. Listen carefully to me. Get your crucifix. Hang it in your room. Go every day and forgive yourself. That's what I do. I go, I say, Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then I say, Jesus, write, write, write. Because the more he legibly he writes the law in your heart, the more you will respond. Yes or no? then that relationship is deepening. My knowing of Jesus is increasing. All because why? I'm, forgiving, I'm, I'm accepting the forgiveness of my sins. Did you hear what I'm saying? Okay, look at the cross now, come on. Say this after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you because of you, all my sins till this moment are not only forgiven, will never be remembered will never be remembered, washed in your blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Believe the Lord is writing his law on your mind, upon your heart. Believe you're coming to that living relationship. Believe you're coming to know Jesus in a more real way. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Be seated. One more important point. There's so much more to speak to you. But this is extremely important. Listen, listen carefully. I send my little daughter out to play. And after about half an hour, she comes. Aah! She's crying. I said, sweetheart, what happened? What happened? Papa, I've fallen down. I said, okay, okay, come, come. And I, you know, comfort her. I put some medicine, put a band-aid. And I say, go, go, go and play now. Be careful. Don't fall. Don't fall. I said, 
She says, yes, Papa, and she goes. And after about 40 minutes again, she comes, Papa, Papa. I said, oh my gosh, what happened now? Papa, I've fallen down. But I told you, be careful. No, okay, 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 come, 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 come. And again, I comfort her, do whatever is necessary, and say, go now. Now you really be careful. Please, darling, don't fall. You're hurting yourself. Okay, Papa, she goes. And after 25 minutes, she comes again, Papa, Papa, Papa. I said, what? What happened? How am I falling on where? There. Now I realize, see, these band-aids putting for the child is the forgiveness of sins. That hurt needs to be looked after. But I realize her leg is weak. Putting band-aids, she will be falling all her life and she's going to suffer and suffer and suffer. So just putting a band-aid, as important as it is, is not the answer. I have to take her to an orthopedic surgeon and get her leg treated. If her leg is not strengthened, she's going to fall and fall and fall. Yes or no? Have you understood what I'm saying? Give me a loud yes. Come on. Yes. Praise the Lord. Okay, very important. So that is why, you see... One more thing, many things, but there's time only for this next thing. Now, when John the Baptist saw Jesus in John 1.29, in John 1.29, John the Baptist recognized Jesus as the Messiah, and he said to his disciples, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, not sins. There's a big difference between sin and sins. You are committing sins because of sin. And so sins are dealt with through the sacrament of reconciliation, through forgiveness, going to Jesus and forgiving yourself. But sin has to be dealt with. That nature that is causing you to sin again and again and again, if that is not dealt with, you'll be a slave to sin all your life and that's going to prevent you from walking victoriously with Jesus and you're going to suffer and you're going to suffer and you're going to suffer. Have you understood? So now we come to Jesus to come out of sin. You know, sisters and brothers, I met Jesus in 1972. Okay? It's going to be 47 years now. Believe me, without exaggeration, by the grace of God, right from then till today, every day, every day, I come to Jesus only for one thing, to come out of sin. That's all. I rarely ask him for anything temporal, material. I know where I'm vulnerable. I know where I'm weak. I know where I can fall. I know where I can be tempted. I know, I know, I know. I don't stand here as a saint. I stand here as a sinner, desperately in need of Jesus. My whole life is dependent on him. The moment I take my eyes off him, sin gets the better of me and I can fall. I need to trust him 24-7. And so to give you a simple few scriptures regarding this truth. Have you, you understood now? Okay. I'll, I'll share this with you. Okay. Take, put down numbers, numbers 21, 5 to 9. Quickly, quickly. Numbers 21, 5 to 9. Now in this, this is a beautiful passage. Moses is leading the children of Israel um, across the, the wilderness into the promised land. And the Israelites are grumbling at Moses, grumbling at God. And so God, to punish them, permits poisonous snakes to come, bite them, and they're beginning to die in the desert. When they see their fellow Israelites dying, they now come running to Moses and say, Moses, Moses, pray to God, pray to God that we are saved from these snakes. So Moses prays to God. And you know what God tells Moses to do? He says, make a brass serpent, he says. Make an image of the very instrument that is causing death. It's a snake. So make a brass serpent, lift it high, and t listen carefully, and tell the Israelites, whoever is bitten by sin, if he looks at the serpent in faith, the poison will lose its effect, and instead of dying, he is going to live. So can you imagine if you're bitten by... See how it's... How seriously we have to take Jesus. If you're bitten by a cobra, you know that you know you're going to die, yes or no? 
and i tell you james just look at this object man no matter nothing will distract me i look and look and as i look and i gaze at this object this poison that was having its effect i find that it's becoming less 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 and it's gone and i say wow i'm alive do you know when you were infected with sin do you know when the serpent bit you at the moment of your conception david says in in, in psalm 51 verse 5 he says behold in iniquity i was brought forth and in sin my mother conceived me your father's a sinner your mother's a sinner when they came together you and i were conceived in sin this is the poison that's killing us draining us making life Im- Im- impossible for us i never knew this i never knew this i'm just committing my sins going for confession committing my sins going for confession Ever since my conversion experience, I, I got in touch with my sinful nature. I said, "Oh my God!" And then the Holy Spirit began to teach me. And since then, till today, till today, until the end of my life, every day. Do you know when this poison you will get rid of? Do you know when? Five. One of the saints say, five minutes after you die. That's why till your last breath you need Jesus. In fact your last words I pray that I will utter if I'm conscious and I know I'm going I say Jesus 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 my savior. Beautiful. Now that incident in numbers 21 4 to 9 Jesus refers to that incident put put down john chapter 3 verse 15 john chapter 3 verse 15 jesus says just as moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness so must the son of man be lifted up that whoever believes in him will have everlasting life sin entered through a man the serpent bit and so a serpent had to be lifted up no sin that came into our lives through a man through adam it was adam's sin that has infected the whole human race so jesus is the second adam so when jesus died on the cross he is not only atoned and washed away the sins of the entire human race but he is also destroyed the nature of sin within you and within me and within every man every woman and that is what you and i should be looking for to be freed from the enslavement of sin the domination of sin the tragedy of sin the deception of sin so deadly poison sisters and brothers and i always say this blessed is the man blessed is the woman who's got in touch with this poison because unless you know it is there you don't turn to jesus by experience you'll have to get in touch with your fallen sinful nature then you'll come to jesus It's like for me having cancer. What can I do? There's nothing I can do, so I go to the best oncologist. You can't do anything about your sin. You can only come out of sin by faith in Jesus, by entrusting your life into the hands of another. And then it's understood by the oncologist and understood by me. You know what he's? It's both of us understand. You know what the understanding is? you know in other words he's saying to me fritz if you're not willing to be not dead on that table i cannot touch you and i won't touch you until you surrender completely let go of your life then god can take over not otherwise otherwise you'll be just be playing some spiritual games and they'll play havoc in your life you need the oncologist you need jesus 24/7 to help you resist the enslavement of sin and i'll quickly so behold the lamb of god now listen i'll give you another help get your crucifix okay now remember this as the children of israel looked at that brass serpent what happened to them the poison of the snake lost its potential right 
It had no more effect. And instead of dying, they lived. So now, how do you come out of sin? Go to your crucifix. I'm telling you, go every day. And I'll tell you, you will know now. I'll tell you how, how, you, how you can get in touch with your enslavement. If you, don't, if you think you're okay, you're a holy fellow, and you think you're a holy girl, I'll prove you wrong. What is the sin you've been confessing again and again and again and again and again? Come on. That will show you the poison. Among other sins, there's one prominent sin. All of us will know it. Whether it's for us boys, whether it's masturbation, whether it's pornography, whether it's you know, chasing after women, whether it's smoking, drinking, you name it. Vulgar talk, whatever it is. And you find yourself, every time you go for confession, you repeat, you know, I'll tell you something, next time you go for confession, you know what do you do? You got your iPhone with you? Just record your confession. Put it on, record it. Next time you go for confession, shut your mouth. Put the play button. Come on, a louder clap for that. <laughs> See, that is the sin you're enslaved to. And the only, okay, for those of you that are writing notes, I'll give you two more scriptures. Um, uh, Romans 7, 21 to Romans 8, 8. Romans 7, 21 to Romans 8, 8. And Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, 1 to 3. Pray to the Holy Spirit, go through those scriptures, and it will... Hebrews chapter 12, 1 to 3. 1 to 3. Read those, these two scriptures and they will confirm what I said to you earlier. So once again, stand up now. Think specifically now. Think you Now you've been bitten by that serpent and that poison is destroying you, that habitual sin. You're, you're a slave to it. Paul says we are captives to this sin. We are wretched people. Think of that particular sin. I'm also thinking of this, of my own sin, right? I don't stand here as a saint. I know where I'm weak, where I'm vulnerable. Think of that sin. Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. Look, 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 young men, look at Jesus. And believe as you look at Jesus, the victory that he won over sin, not sins, he has forgiven sins, but the, the victory that he has won over our sinful nature is being drained out of you, is, 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 is being what you yeah, are, drained out of you, Thank him in faith, and that sin will lose some hold of you. Not complete. Some hold. Tomorrow again, so And you have to keep looking, looking, looking until it loses its hold completely. And when that sin is finished, God will show you another sin in your life. You have to keep looking and looking and looking. To